Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. It's been known since ancient times that the Earth is a sphere and that objects that are near the surface tend to fall down. Lots of people might be surprised when they hear that we've known that the Earth is a sphere since ancient times, but actually a man named Aristosthenes who lived from 276 BC to 194 BC was the first person to calculate the circumference of the Earth. So imagine this, here's the Earth in space and the sun's rays are coming in basically parallel to each other. So if you have a building right here on the surface of the Earth, at a certain time of day, a certain day of the year, it won't cast a shadow. But at the very same moment, maybe a building over here somewhere would cast a shadow. Aristosthenes noticed this, and from the angle of the shadow and the distance from one city to the other, he was actually able to calculate the circumference of the Earth. You might be familiar with the story about Isaac Newton sitting under an apple tree. An apple falls on his head and he comes up with the law of universal gravitation. It's a nice story. I'm not sure how true it is. But Newton was the first person that connected the idea that objects like apples fall towards the center of the earth with the idea that the moon orbits around the earth. In order to do this, to come up with this law, Newton actually had to create a new type of math. Newton had to invent calculus. Don't worry, you won't have to learn calculus in order to understand Newton's law of universal gravitation. What he found out was that more mass meant more gravitational attraction. So that meant that the force was proportional to the masses. He also figured out that the force was inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centers. So the further those objects got away from each other, the less gravitational attraction. Newton published his findings in 1687. He only knew that the gravitational force was proportional to each mass and inversely proportional to the distance between their centers squared. There was something missing was a gravitational constant. That gravitational constant wasn't measured until over a hundred years later by Henry Cavendish. That gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. This part over here are newtons times meters squared divided by kilograms squared. These are all the units. And we'll take a look at these in detail later but basically what happens is that the meters squared cancel out and the kilograms squared cancel out so that the force, gravitational force, is in newtons. And that's what force should be in, newtons. So putting it all together, Newton's law of universal gravitation is F is equal to big G times M1 times M2 divided by R squared. So you find the magnitude of the force by using that equation, but remember force is a vector and it also has a direction. So the direction of the force is along the line connecting the centers of the two masses. Each mass feels a force of attraction towards the other mass along that line. And if you remember from Newton's second law, the force of one object created by the other is the same as the force on the other object created by the first. They are equal forces in opposite directions. Like I said, Newton's third law tells us the force on each mass is equal. So that means if I drop a pen, the force of the earth pulling down on the pen is equal to the force of the pen pulling up on the earth. That sounds crazy. How could something as small as a pen pull up on something as large as the earth? But since the mass of the Earth is so much larger, that force causes the pen to accelerate down while the movement of the Earth up is completely unmeasurable. You can't measure it, but you could calculate it. 
and that's something that you'll be doing in your homework problems. Let's do one of these problems together. What is the magnitude of the gravitational force between two one kilogram objects which are located one meter apart? That's something that's easy for all of us to visualize. One kilogram objects and one meter. So let's try it out. So we're going to use our new equation. So we've got Fg is equal to big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, and the units are newtons, meters squared, divided by kilograms squared, times one kilogram, times another kilogram, divided by one meter squared. So now we'll take a look at those units. So we've got meters squared here and on the bottom. So we will cancel those out. We have kilograms squared here and two kilograms. So as you can see, we are left with just newtons. So we've got the gravitational constant times one times one divided by one. So really all we have left is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons. So look at this 10 to the negative 11th. What that means is that we've got a number like this. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 spaces. That's a very small force. Can't even imagine a force like that. So this gravitational force is actually a very weak force. So you really need very big objects like the size of the Earth or the Moon or the Sun in order to feel even a small force.